everybody, Bruce Jones here, and it's a Wednesday afternoon. It's hot, been out cutting grass. So we had a, an excellent question came across uh, in the group this little while ago, and um, I thought I, instead of, I was gonna start to write an answer, but it's a big question. So I thought I would just do a video on it because it's just easier to, to do a video. So this is about making a coloring book, and this is sort of on my list of the next course to teach or something like that. And um, hi, Megan. Megan's here. And um, let me just make sure everything is like running cool. And so what I thought I'd do is I would just there we go. Okay. Sorry about that. I think I did something weird. Let me just it's, I refreshed the wrong page. And um, there we go. Just make sure everything is up and you can see me. Get this out of the way. And there we go. All right. So we're good. All right. So I want to just try to unpack this question. So it's on the page. It's been here for a little bit. And um, let's do it here. Megan, just put a, a check if you can still see me. Still going, I think. All right. So the question was, Here's, I'll just read it to you, and then I'm going to unpack it and break it into little pieces. So I dream of making my own art journal or coloring book, but I'm so stuck. Where to start? It's been Is it better to draw by hand like I do and then buy a scanner and input the images or to buy a good camera, take pictures of the art, or is it just an online using a program? Which is the best program? Also, if I made an art journal with already finished pieces, could some of it um, coloring pages or vice versa. So how many pages should I get total? Um, what else? I have? I'm sorry guys if I signed a totally lost. I'm a math teacher, but I've always drawn all my life and I haven't had time to do a lot of research. So what I thought I would just um, do this here is just sort of break this into the pieces and just sort of talk about it. So let's see here. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, good. Okay. All right. We're good. So, all right, here we go. So, 100% um, yes, you should make a coloring book or an art book or a journal book. So I have made lots of them. Um, you can, as you know, people know me, this one is one of my coloring books. Uh, one of my best selling, selling books is a coloring book. Um, it's, I have my first book. I've done them. I've done them all different ways from stock images that I have bought. You can see right here. I'll, I'll go into a little bit more detail in a moment. To ones that I've hand drawn, I've done them every different way, and um, I think that's a completely wide open market, and you can do them really any any way that you want. So let's just sort of say the first one that you've drawn them. So you can do a number of different ways on that. You can draw the art. So this is my first book, and um, let's see here. Do this. Hi, Bruce. And I don't know who this is, but we'll let's see who it is. Oh, Young Chen. Hi, Young Chen. One of this is so Young is in the house. Young is an unbelievable. If you don't follow Young on Instagram, look him up. He is uh, fantastic. He is a beautiful watercolorist and a artist. I mean, I wouldn't. I can never even approach. When he sees what I've drawn, and, and uh, so he's fantastic. If you want to see beautiful watercolor and learn how to do watercoloring, Jan is the person. So my very, very first book, this is my very first book. My very, very first book was a coloring book. And this was done by hand drawing. This is when I first got out of school, these sort of weird pen and ink drawings that I did. So they're right there about a little girl who goes to a dance with dinosaurs. Um, this book was actually turned into a play. It's a musical, and actually, it just—it's been running for years in Pennsylvania, and it's just been running again. I've been in talking with them; they have done a whole musical around it. Um, but, anyways, you can draw it by hand as drawings, and then you can scan the art. So that's a very easy thing to do. Scanners are super cheap. Um, I have one right here from Hewlett Packard sitting next to me. I think I paid fifty dollars for the printer scanner combination. The scanner is just fine. It does a great job. The key is 300 dots per inch for your artwork. You know, do it on some nice boards, on paper, something black and white, and um, 300 dots per inch. Make them grayscale drawings to keep the file sizes smaller, and you can put that into pretty much any program, but you can sort of build a page on. You can do it in InDesign, which is what I work in. You can do it in Illustrator. You can do it in PowerPoint. You can do it in Google Docs. The key is 300 dots per inch. 
that will make a just a fine coloring book. Um, so that's that's one way to do it. You can do work in something like Adobe Illustrator. So this book, one of my, this is one of my best selling books that I have. I've had it for years. It's been bestseller on Amazon for years. Uh, these were done. This is a book of maps. So they're coloring books. And these this was done in Adobe Illustrator. And then I built this book in Adobe Illustrator. So you can, um, Adobe Illustrator is a great product to use. People also use Photoshop um, to do their to do their drawings. They can use a, a Waco pad. So you can draw with a, with a tablet um, and put it in. Uh, that works just fine too. I'm gonna turn a little light on here. So it's a little more light. Um, so that's another way. It's really any way that you can sort of get the art done is fine. The key is have nice crisp black line. You don't have to, but I usually um, nice crisp black lines. Uh, the photograph well resolution three hundred dots per inch, and um, that's pretty much it. I have done it from clip art that I've just downloaded. So here's my one of my cats with attitude coloring books, and. Um, Let's just take this out of the way here. Um, so this is just clip art. I downloaded all the cat art and turned it into a coloring book. So I use Graphics Factory. So you, you pay once. It's uh, once a year. It's $49. And you get access to as much art as you can download. Looks just, it's just like, okay. So that's, you can make a book that way. You can go to Shutterstock, pay a little bit more for your art. And I made this coloring book, and this one was just done. This is how I would normally lay them out now, with an illustration on one page and blank on the back. So I'm using Amazon Print on Demand for these three of these books. And the paper is probably a, a little thinner than maybe you might get on a commercial, but it's fine. Just make the back black blank. If they complain about the blank page, just put you know, put a little header up here or something or a number or something on the page. But if you make them every other page, then if people are calling with markers um, and it bleeds through, it won't go on to the next one. So all of these are fine to make your coloring book. Um, you asked about taking a, um, a some finished book and turn that into coloring pages. So I think 100%, if you've made a book that's a picture book, maybe you went around and took flowers or things or something, and um, made a picture book, then uh, you can you can trace those. You can put it into Photoshop, put a layer on it, take your tablet and just, you could trace them. You could use an app, like I was just using on my phone, as like before I was coming on here, um, I'm using an app called Inkwork. So Inkwork, and let me just, let me just turn it on so you can see it. So Inkwork, uh, do, 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 do. let's see. I want this to be not this. So I can see if I can get this to go back where it is. All right, Inkwork. So Inkwork is an app that's on your phone that allows you to take a picture. So I'm gonna take my phone right here. All right, here's my phone. I'm gonna take a picture of my microphone that's sitting right here. So I just took a picture. You can use art that's in your phone. You can take one of, with it. So there's my my phone and I'm going to use that picture and ink work takes and makes art out of it just like that look at that. whoops look at that so that could be a piece of coloring work art right I mean how fast was that super fast um, and you have all these adjustments you can do all kinds of cool things with it um, but then you can export this whoops using this little button right up here and you have artwork that you can do you can pick a picture of your picture whatever you want to do so there's lots of ways to do it. I think combining a, a picture book, uh, as you say here, an art book with your own drawings, that's cool. I think it's, a, it's wide open and you can kind of do whatever you want um, in terms of it. So what do I usually do after I have the artwork? I'll assemble my artwork. Then I'll use a program like InDesign. Works really well for laying out my book. If it's an Illustrator drawings, I'll use Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator to do that. Um, for editing, I'll use Photoshop to clean things up. Like if I was using the picture of that microphone, I'd clean it up a little bit, take out maybe some background things. Um, you could also use PowerPoint to lay these things out. You could also use Google Docs. So you have a variety. It's really any program that you have that you can you just need to get the art into it uh, and set up pages you can use. The key is 
300 dots per inch if you're using a picture. So that's that's key. Um, if you're using vector art, like I did in this book, then the vectors are fine and they're they're all really crisp. So um, so that's what I would do with do with that. So let's see here. So you can hand draw. You can use stock photos. You can scan things. You can customize them in um, looking at. I'm reading the thing here while I'm doing this. Um, you can do it in Photoshop. Um, so those are all ways to even take finished pieces, put them into your stuff. Um, how many pages? Good question. I kind of like, um, well, this is this is 90 pages, all right? This is 90 pages. This is eight and a half by 11. And I like between um, 70 and 90. I like it to feel like a book, right? So that when somebody buys it, it feels like a book. This feels like a book, right? Don't have to be super thick, but if you're only this thick, like minimum on, on KDP Amazon is 24 pages. That's just too thin. Children's books are generally 32 pages. That's kind of thin. You don't need 90 pieces of art. Remember, if you can usually just put them today, you just put them on one side, on the right-hand side of the page. Um, so you only need half the number of pieces of art of the pages that you have. So if you have a 70 page book, it's only 35 pieces of art. So that cuts the number down. I've, I've definitely done books with them on both sides. Um, this is before I started to do that, of splitting the pages up, but um, there's no, uh, that's generally so. So you need around 40 pieces of art, I would think, to make a decent size book, eight and a half by 11, or I like this square format. This is kind of cool. It's kind of a good, good one. Um, how many pages should I get to get a complete book? So that's what you do. So you will, um, you get a layout, you get some program to put, collect your art, make sure it's 300 dots per inch, um, find some place to put them. So like a page maker, I mean, an InDesign, Illustrator, PowerPoint, something like that. You're going to need to make a cover and, um, let's see here. Yep. Oh, just making sure. Anybody wants to answer a question, just come on in and I can, we can try to answer it. Um, you're gonna to need to lay out the inside, all right? And you're gonna to need to lay out the cover. And um, you can download my book if you want, which is right up at the top. I believe that link is back in after my workbook class. Nope, my workbook class. So go, I will put the link in the video um, where you can actually, let me do that right now while we're doing this. Um, so I have my publishing book that you can download and it's, free and you can go download that book and tells you everything you need to know so publish and launch your own book let me just get it here uh let me just get the publishing link and i'll put it in the description here we go so if you can just go download this link right there boom and i'll show it up on the screen here show right there so you just go to that link but i just dropped it into the links in below usually it's up there but it's right there just right now and you can download my publishing book and i'll tell you how to set up your cover and all that so it's a separate file separate pdf and then for printing i would just send them to amazon use the amazon kdp direct and um it's the best place to go it's free to use and um you know that we it's free to print and you are exposed to the entire pretty well, entire US market, the English market, um, Australian, uh, European, so you can be exposed to everywhere, and then it's up to you to do the marketing of your book. And I've talked about that a lot. I had another course, but um, on how to make a coloring book, and I'm thinking of redoing it for this. So that's pretty much it. It's, um, I would just start, um, make your art, assemble it, and uh, get my book. Remember, here's that link, get the book, and uh, I'll walk you through on how to set up the inside, how to set up the cover. Those are two PDF files, and those get loaded up. Um, I had trouble with not letting me bleed photos. Okay, so that, that you have to set that up correctly. Um, yes, so KDP has gotten a lot pickier about everything. So unless you have to bleed, I wouldn't bleed. So you'll notice on my books, um, you can't, you can't use, I don't use any of this outer space, all right? So this is, whoops, where we go? This is the margin. So if you don't bleed, you just leave a half inch margin or a three quarter inch margin and you're fine. The key for setting up for KDP is that you need to 
And what you're talking about is artwork that runs right off the page is called bleeding artwork. And it's one of the trickier things to set up because people get sort of tripped up on it. But basically what I do when I'm building my books that are going to have bleed is I make my book in the size I want. Then I go back to document setup in the InDesign thing and add an extra eighth of an inch top, outside, and bottom. Don't use the bleed feature. There's a feature in InDesign that says bleed and slugs. Do not use that. It seems like you should be using it. It doesn't work. It isn't for this purpose. KDP doesn't access it. So what you need to do is make the actual page size bigger, not the gutter, but the top eighth of an inch, the outside eighth of an inch, and the bottom. So if you look at a page, it has to be the outside edge here, and the outside edge here. And it's one eighth of an inch. So there's two ways. You can set the file up at the beginning. So eight and a half by 11. So eight and a half now becomes 8.625, a little bit bigger. And the top becomes 11 and a quarter. One eighth up here, one eighth down there. So that becomes two eighths, becomes a quarter. So that's the new size, but there's nothing on the inside. That doesn't, ex you don't expand that side, just the outside because they cut and trim this off. So if you're having trouble, you're getting that complaint from KDP that they're not accepting your bleeds, turn all those, I have to show you where this is. Uh, let me bring this up here. Let me just open up this document and that will this will take care of your problem. I, I noticed a lot lately, a lot of people are getting sort of, kind of get stuck with this and uh, let me show you what I mean. Let's see if I can get this to open, 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 open. And then we'll do that. All right, here we go. It's opening up. So this is my Paisley Magic um, book. And I know it gets complaining about stuff. All right. Nope, wrong file. Oh, no, here it is. Okay. So let me go right here. So let me go to it. Let's go to screen share. Screen share, entire screen. All right, so just so you see what's going on, and let me get myself out of this picture. All right, so this is the page, what she's talking about, and this is a really common thing. So you might be doing a coloring book this way or doing a picture book, is that your art is gonna be running off the page, all right, in all these different directions. This is a page spread in design. Left page, right page. This is eight and a half by 11. This is this book, uh, the inside of this book. So when you go to do the bleed part, you're going to come over here to file. And I and you can do this at the beginning or you can do this at this stage. It doesn't really matter. You just need to keep sort of square what you're doing. Come down to document setup. And you'll notice right here's the document setup. Let me make sure that you can, you're seeing that. Yes, you are. Okay, so right down here, a lot of people will go right here to the bleed and slug thinking, oh, I'm going to bleed my pages and I'm going to add the extra space right here. No, do not use this section. This does not work. Leave these zero. What you're going to do is right up here in the width and the height is you're going to increase the width of it to 8.625. So I've added an, an eighth of an inch to my half inch, my eight, half an eight by eight and a half. I'm adding an eighth of an inch to the outside and I'm adding a quarter of an inch top and bottom because I'm doing it in top and bottom, all right? So, uh, hold on, I wasn't right, seven five, all right? So I've added a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch top and bottom, which equals a quarter of an inch. I've added one eighth inch to the side and my margins, what I will tend to do with my margins is I will set this, at zero so I can see them first. I do this in two stages. And I do this every time I do one of these books because it's you just have to be clear about it. I'll set this at zero, or actually at one eighth for my one eighth of an inch, 0.125. Right, so my margin is, I've just made my margin 0.125 just so I can see except for the inside. I'll leave this at zero. So we're only adding it to the top the bottom and the outside. Make this zero, all right? So notice that, nothing on the inside, just the outside. Hit okay. 
And now you'll see, so here's my book. You'll see that eighth of an inch that's going around the outside right here. That's what's going to bleed right there, that outer part. So what I tend to do to keep my head straight about this is I will put a guide. I'll pull down my pull-down guides. So I'm in InDesign. I'm going to pull down my pull-down guides, and I put the guides in here so that I just mark where this, this is the part that's going to be cut off. All right. So I know this may seem like laborious, but it's the only way that I have found to keep this straight in your head. Otherwise, it just gets messy. So I also going to say have my artwork is going to extend right out into that bleed area. All right. So if I was going to bleed this piece of artwork, I've moved my art. So I know it's going to be cut. That outer part is going to be cut off. Now, the second thing I do is then I come back to my margins. And I usually do this on the master page. Let's go to the master page. And I'll reset my margins now to compensate for that. So the top will now be 625, the bottom 625, and the outside is 625, and the inside is 0.5. That's, those are my real margins. Even though I know I'm going to be bleeding, I still have margins on my page. And I like to kind of know where they are, so I keep everything straight. I hit OK. And you'll notice that this is a little wider because it has that eighth of an inch than this. This is the half inch that runs around. And this is there. So let's go back to three. I know I probably super confused everybody. Let me move this out of the way. Get this out of here. So now you'll see my margin. This is my real margin inside here. So I'm always aware of where my margins are and how they work. But this part where I marked it is the part that's going to be cut off. So I'm going to build my book thinking about this inner part, but I know this outer part will be cut off. Make sure my artwork extends oops, uh, right out. Notice even I messed it up, so I'm going to extend this back to the center. There we go. And now that's ready to go. Okay, and that outer part will be cut off, and then my the inner part will be fine. The reason I know one of the margins is if I have type or have something, I don't want to have stuff out here that it's going to potentially get cut off. So, um, cool. All right. Hopefully that that helps. Let me undo this part. All right. Oh, next question. Let's see. Besides using good keywords and categories, do you have any tips on how to get your book seen in the first pages of Amazon? A good reference. Um, well, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, no, no, and yes. So you can um, good keywords and good categories. Do you have any questions? seen? I don't worry too much about my books being seen on Amazon in the first category because I'm sending people there from my websites. I'm more concerned about people finding my book on the web with the power of Google and then sending people to Amazon. Um, you can find the best keywords and stuff and let me, um, by looking at your competitors, looking at what they're doing, looking at the categories that they are in and making sure you're in those categories. And once you have launched your book, um, you, you launch your book with two categories or I think it was two for printing. And then once your book is up and you see where Amazon has put it, go look at your competitors and figure out where you want it to be. And then you can email KDP and say, I think my book needs to be in these categories. So you can have up to 10 categories. Um, for your book, but initially you're only allowed two, I think, right? Kindle, the ebook is one and the print book is two, or it's the other way around. Um, but you have to make a stab at where you're going to be. You want to look at where the best place to put it, depending on where you think your market is and what's going on, and, and depending on whether you're doing a bestseller campaign or not. But Amazon will also figure out where your book belongs and stick it there. And then once you have it up for a little bit and you've made some sales and it's sort of found its home, then you go and you say, okay, I think it should be in these other categories. You figure out what they are. You can have up to 10, and you go to the bottom of the KDP Kindle page. Let me show you where that is. And let me just see here. Let's go to boop, 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 uh, screen share. 
share my screen, application. Uh, we'll use this one, share. All right, so let's take this out of here. And then let's go to KDP. Really, we do a whole thing today, but it's cool. All right, so I'm just going to go to my KDP Amazon page. And let me see. Am I in here? Did I pick the right one? Hold on. Let me skip, let's get the right one. Hold on. Take this out. Stop, stop. stop. Let me remove this. Let's go back to screen share. And let's get the right one. Share screen. Application. Right here. Okay. Here we go. All right. So I'm inside my KDP account. So these are some of my books. And if you go down to the bottom, right down here, you will find contact us. And you can email them with where you think your book belongs. All right. So it's already in two. I would just keep put those two and then give eight others. And you can do that by going to Amazon. And let's just look at uh, adult coloring books. And we'll just pick this one, just for no reason other than it's here. And you'll come down here, and you'll see the categories where this book is showing up. So you want to do some research. You want to figure out where the book is, where it should be, and then figure out where you might want your book to fit. So once your book is up a little bit and it's going, your categories will appear down here. And uh, this book is number 149. Look at that. Pay attention to this area. This is key. This book is 149 out of like 8 million. This book is killing it. Um, so look where these are and then come up with your list. Now, uh, so keywords, the other thing you can do with keywords is look through. So I'm coming down to the review. So here's this book, all right? And you, you make a stab at where you think your book should be. And then you come down here and look through the reviews of other people and look where their books are going. So these words that are right here are words that are generated out of all these reviews. Okay, so they have all these reviews and there are common words. So some of these are key, great keywords. Um, coloring pencil, coloring book. Look at a number of different books and see what's starting to show up. Right away is not a keyword. Uh, but coloring book is a keyword. Let's go to a different book. Let's pick this one. I don't know whose book this is. It's another book, just a random book, 100 Flowers to Color. I'm going to come down here to the bottom. Here we have other categories, mixed media, flowers arranging, individual. This isn't always going to be a coloring book. But look at where these books, these popular books are. It's maybe it's a good place to be. Look at down here. Coloring book is showing up again. So coloring book seems to be a good one. Adult coloring is a good use word to use. Colored pencils seems to be a good word that's showing up in, on another book's book review. So this is a good place to kind of look and see what is going on in keywords. Let's see, we have a question here. I use book bowl together. Yeah, yeah, there's a bunch of those kind of things. So the sites that help you sort of intelligence sites. Um, but let me show you what I do, um, one of the things I do, yep, that's cool, is I create my own, I build my own websites. This is one of them where I use to sell my maps. And um, so this site is a site that has a lot of my map art on it. I took all the artwork from my maps and posted it on this site with good keywords, and then I wrap my coloring books around my art, all right? So this allows me to use the power of Google to bring things here. So you can take all the artwork from your coloring book, put each piece of it up on a site someplace, describe it well, make sure the artwork's described well, there's a good description underneath, and then place ads for your own book. You can use free websites, you can use blogs, you can use Wix and Weebly, I use, this is, Hosted on um, HostGator, it cost me, I don't know, eight dollars a month. Um, so this is how I market my books. So this is, let me just show you. Um, I do things like this, where this is a this is a, a very popular page on this site where you can come and get take this piece of art and download it and use it. 
but I also put an ad up here at the top. You can click this button and this will take you to Amazon and people can buy my book. Pretty cool. Or I also sell PDF versions of it right here. Click on this button and you can buy a PDF version of my book. So I'm not always concerned about selling books. I'm concerned about um, using, uh, making the, it's the profit from the book. That's what it is. However I make the profit from the book. It's basically how do I make the royalties from the book um, is the same. Whether I'm selling a PDF version of it or I'm selling a printed version of it, I don't really care as long as I'm sort of making some, some money on the book. So I use my the art in my books to sell, to attract traffic from Google and put it uh, into into my into my own sites. So um, that's hopefully that answers good keywords, categories, and how many tips on how to get your book seen on the first pages of Amazon. So I don't really need to worry about getting seen from the first pages of Amazon. I worry about how to get them to this page. Whoops, how to get them to this page, and then this button takes them to the book. So it isn't about searching in Amazon. You need to build that marketing world. You can set up videos around your book. You can do social media. Some of the biggest traffic, let me just go to here, Pinterest. Pinterest, Pinterest, Pinterest. If you don't have your artwork on Pinterest, so let's just go to Pinterest. And I'll just search on something in Pinterest here. Let's see. Um, I'm showing you some of how I do. Oh, search right here. World Globe. Let's see if this shows up. So I'm going to show you this. Uh, let me see. World Globe's coloring pages. Let's see if this shows up. Oh, yeah. So here we go. So these are other people. Uh, this is one of mine right here. Right here. So it's a random search I didn't have any idea about right here on Pinterest. That's one of my pieces of art. And people come. Here's another one of my pieces of art down here. Right? There's probably more in here. Um, I put all my art gets pulled over to Pinterest. Here's another one of my pieces of art is right over here. So um, let me show you another way to market your book. So what I'm doing is I'm building a world where I'm driving traffic into Amazon. I'm not um, worrying about Amazon so much. It isn't about Amazon. It's driving traffic to Amazon. So let me go to Google. All right. So everybody goes to Google. Google Images is one of the biggest search engines. There's Google, but Google Images is big. So I'm just going to do world um, maps and globes. I don't know, something like that. We'll just try that. So let's see. Coloring pages. Let's make it coloring pages. So here I am on Google. I just searched on world maps and globes coloring pages. This is my art right here. This is mine. It's just in Google. I've coded all those pictures that I put on that site. Um, I, you know, uh, this is a good question. How do you think customers would feel about coloring book made of public domain illustrations when you're not an artist and you compile images? I don't think they really care. It's you're the curator of the art. You're giving it its own special twist. These people aren't searching around for art. If they would, they'd go build their books. You're the one building it. Just, you know. Um, put it together in a nice way. Do something cool with it. Um, I don't think people care at all. You can buy tons of coloring books with public domain art in them. Um, so I don't, I don't think the people that are buying it care. Um, so, so what I'm trying to show you here is that by how you code your drawings out in the world, Google will will index them and um, bring them all together. This is probably one of yep, that's one of mine, right? It's on somebody else took it. But I make sure that all my art has my name on it. That's key. I don't just have it random on the site. It has my name and copyright and stuff on it. So no matter, even though this person has it on a different site, they took the art, it's my name on it, and eventually they will wriggle their way to me. So um, you'll see there's lots of, look at this. This is all mine. This is all my art sitting up here on a, on a completely generic topic. Um, mine just shows up. So um, I hope that gives you some sense of what you can do on how to do it. So that, so my basic point here is, is I don't worry about Amazon. I want to code it as well as I can. I want to describe it as well as I can, make sure it works on Amazon. But Amazon is not going to sell my books and not going to 
actually they do sell my books because I sell so many, but um, they, it's not their job really, it's my job. So I'm going to build a system like a wagon wheel. I'm gonna drive traffic from lots of places. Uh, most of it I do is free, Pinterest is free. I'm using a really cheap uh, website. I'm doing, um, you can use Blogger is free. Wix and Weebly are basically free. You have social media, you can put them into Google. You can do all kinds of things to get people to come to your site and get your coloring book. So, um, all right, hopefully <laughs> we went in a weird direction there. Lots of stuff. And um, let's see if anybody has any other questions. Hi, Barbara, thank you for coming in. Barbara, yeah, what illustrations? Oh, all right, let's do here. What With the illustrations, with the illustrations, that did not work for your book. So I'm not sure, Barbara, I understand what illustrations that did not work for your book. Hmm. Can you, if you're still on, can you just type a better, tell me what it is your, what's the question? I'm not sure what the question is. Um, if you wanna give me a better answer. I'll wait here for a second. So, so I love doing cover books. It, it, you're allowed to get stuff out quickly, and um, uh, you can explore and do things and try all kinds of things and just see where you can go and experiment um, with your ideas. And you can make them over and over and over and over again and make new ones and different ones. And um, in every different way that you think, um, I would suggest going there. So, illustration did not work for your book. Oh, all right, kind of. Kind of a kidding old question. I took illustrations into. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Why not? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's. I understand. Okay. So, <laughs> can you show how to search for free clip arts? Okay, I will do that. Um, so yes, let me ask Barbara's script first. Perfect. So maybe you did a lot of illustrations for a book, and you have all these illustrations left. Why not make a deluxe? A, a, you can do a couple things. You can take those illustrations, make your own coloring book. You could put them at the back of your current book. I think Barbara, you made, a, I know Barbara made a, a story book. So why not add some coloring pages, activity pages at the back with the illustrations that didn't kind of the, from the cutting room floor, just add them to the back or make a companion book that goes along, um, that goes along with your with your book. So I would, yeah, I mean, you, you the artwork's done. You know, if you have, if you wanna make a separate book and you have about 40 pieces, do that or have the person draw a few more if you don't have enough or put them in the back of your book and um, expand the book and make two versions of the book. There's the, you know, or put them in between the pages, you know, instead of just the back, just insert them. Every fourth page has an activity coloring page in your book. So you have a, a book of the story and a book um, that's sort of a deluxe version with coloring in it. It's completely up to you. You can just do whatever you want. All right. Jan has a great question. Can you show how to search for free clip art? So let's go back to, whoops, nope, I'm gonna do that. I wanna try this, let's see. Did this work? Add to stream. All right, let me try, let's see what I can do. So one of the places, let me show you where I get artwork, different places. Oops, am I recording? Okay, it's working. All right, so here we go. Let's go get some artwork. So my cat books came from, Graphics Factory. So this is just a site. It's been around for a long time. And um, I think it's $49 a year to for unlimited download. They want you to make books. They want you to do all kinds of cool things with it. I'll just put the word cats in here. And here are cats, right? So 49 is basically the same as free when you've downloaded about 100 pictures. Um, so that's... Let's see here. Is that from Jan? I don't know who this is from. So let's just make sure I want to see who I'm from. It's hard to, with this, I don't see the question. I mean, see who the person is. So anyway, so this is a great site. I've used this for a number of books. It's not the most sophisticated art in the world, but you know, you could crank out books. I, there's one that, what's really cool, let's see if they have it here. Um, it used to be, I was a member of this for a long time. So let me just go here. Let's see if you use Felix. Uh, yeah, look down here. Okay, so what kind of coloring books do I wanna make? So if you go look at this, if you come scrolling down here, see these popular keywords? These are basically in the order that people download them. Tattoo, you could do tattoo books, 
Christmas books. Christmas is coming up here at exactly the right point right now to make a bunch of Christmas books. Borders, cats, dogs, weddings, flowers, football books. This is, here's a hundred coloring books you can make for $49. So that's pretty free. Okay, is that, there's one. All right, let's go to another one. So I use, Pixabay a lot. A lot of a lot of us use Pixabay. Pixabay is a um, stock photo site that lets you download and use these draw these images for free uh, com for commercial purposes. So I'm going to just search on. Let's just keep with the cat theme because you know why not. And I'm going to change this to illustrations. We have vector graphics and illustrations. So let's go to illustrations. You might need to use Photoshop to clean these up. These ones up here pay, these are free, all right? So we have some more cat pictures. So let's just say this cat picture. I don't know why I'm picking cats, but there. So free for commercial use, no attribution required. This is free. There's a bunch of these sites, Upsplash, Pixabay. You want this picture, you hit free download. You can do a vector version, you can do like high re higher res version, you hit the word download. I do that 40 times and I have a cat book. Okay, that's pretty cool. All right, let's go to another place. Um, let's see here. If you can use the Creative Commons, this is a little more risky, but Creative Commons zero. So we're gonna do cat pictures. CTR pictures. Creative Commons. This is the license for public domain. Um, Commons zero. Let's see what we get. And we'll do this from images. Here you're gonna have to test. You're gonna have to search and see where these images come from. But this is how you can get some. I, this isn't would not be the way that I would normally go with this. Um, but you can sort of you can see there. Um, there is lots of public domain stuff um, out there in the world. So I think it's archive, archive.org, archive.org is another one. And archive.org, let's go to all, it's like this, it's digital, and it's free, it's all in the public domain, and you can get cats, let's just try cats, and you're gonna find something in here, probably. In images, so we want to search. You're gonna to have to dig around um, for cat pictures or cat images, but the Internet Archive, archive.org, has a lot of stuff like that. Another place to get great stuff is the Library of Congress. Okay, so Library of Congress, the magic date is 1923. So anything before 1923. Um, and we want to go to usually the best place to do this is right free to use. This is on weddings at the moment. So look at we have free art here, um, content that is free to use and reuse. Library of Congress free to use and reuse art. Okay, so this can be you. This can be turned into illustrations. There's going to be illustrations in here. There's millions of images that are out there and um you can search through here i use this for maps a lot for different kinds of things i was doing books and printed material so we can search on uh, cats let's just we'll keep with the cat theme because why not and you will find these are old books this was 1901 so this book is in the public domain we can open this book up and we can probably go see the whole book, 270 il illustrations in this book. Let's let it load. It's coming, it'll fill in here at some point. Uh, but the library, oh, here we go. All right, so it's starting to fill in. And if we search down through here, you might have to do some manipulating. All right, we have illustrations starting to pop up. You're gonna have to dig, but there is a tremendous amount of information on the Library of Congress site that's in the public domain. And you have access to 
all of it because you're a citizen of this country. And let's get down into the meat of the book. So this is, you know, you're gonna have to go into Photoshop and sort of tweak this. Um, but somewhere in here are gonna be illustrations. I'm sure, I said there were. So you just have to dig around in there somewhere. I don't know where it is, but there's plenty in there. There's also, you know, if you find out, if you go to a used bookstore that you might have near you, um, just look for books that are before 1923 and you can scan those. You have 270 illustrations in sequence images. Oh, here we go. Oh, this is better. Look at that. All right, so we're starting to get some illustrations in here. So I'm just picked a random book, but there's plenty, 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 plenty in the Library of Congress, and we have access to it. So, um, and there's plenty of other places to go. One of the places that people use a lot, depending on what kind of artwork you're doing, is you can search the the patent office. So old patents, I think their copyright only extends. I might get me wrong on this, but it only extends for um, uh, 14 years or 17 years, something. But you can. Um, Patent illustrations, patent yes. illustrations of, of um, tractors. Tractors right here. All right. So most of these are going to be in the public domain. You just have to do a little research and learn about them, but they're mostly going to be in the public domain. Um, and there's ways that you can go into Google and you have all kinds of tools and settings up here where you can do set things by dates. Um, so all that stuff is available. So hopefully that just gives you a little taste of, um, where's my page here? Uh, it gives you a little taste of what's available in the public domain world. Um, there are coloring, there are comic books. You can go to Gutenberg and look through through those books, there are comic books that you can dig around in and get public domain art. It's it's sort of available everywhere. So, um, so there you go. All right, um, I think that covers it. All right, I think we're good for now on our questions. And uh, this sort of went off in its own direction. All right, so stay cool, everybody, and uh, hopefully that's good. That gave you. Um, Wonderful, Bruce. Let's see. Thanks, Bruce. I will share this information with my students. Yeah, thank you, Jan. And um, if you search on Instagram, you'll see um, Jan Chen's. Here, hold on. Let me just show you because his stuff is so cool. Instagram. Instagram. Let me just go to. Let's do here. So Jan is in the room. If you want to have learn how to paint. This is where you want to go. Let me just show you this because this is fantastic stuff. So, Jan teaches, he teaches watercolor, he teaches painting, he teaches drawing, uh, he's got online courses, all that kind of stuff. And if you just go to here, Y O N G, Y O N G C H E N on Instagram, you can connect with him. Um, on YouTube.com, enjoying art. And um, yeah, there it is. You put the link. All right, here. Put, let me show you the link. Bring it right here. Go to this link, and you can learn all about his stuff. If you want to learn how to do all of this, uh, he is really, really good in step by step teaching you how to do all of this stuff. I mean, look at this stuff. Look at. You want to do this? You know, pretty cool, right? So he's the man on using how to do that. So. Uh, Jasmine, yes, coming in from France. Thank you, Jasmine. And um, great, great. And show that, share that with your students. And uh, let me put your address up here again and uh, kind of be kind of cool. So, anyways, he's the guy. So, let's say you're doing a coloring book. Look at this. This is great. You know, learn how to draw and then uh, put them into your coloring book. So, cool. All right. Hope that worked. And um, there you go. All right. Stay cool, everybody. See you next time.